Good afternoon. I am Mr. Ish. Thank you for joining me for this domain and range test video. A good test video here for pre-calculus students. There will not be entirely 100% your ordinary style of questions. We will have some questions here with a bit of variety. Our first question of 5 will be this. Function f of x is equal to 2x minus 4 divided by x squared minus 4. We have a rational function. We have to determine for what values of x is this function not defined. Which basically means what values of x are not falling within the domain of this function. This question is basically testing to see if students will take the time needed to simplify this rational function before they do domain determination because if they do not then you might end up overestimating or underestimating your domain and you got to simplify this first. You have 2 over x plus 2, a rational function which has been simplified. To determine what function values are not defined, you basically zero out that denominator and you solve for x. x is equal to minus 2. This represents a good vertical asymptote. And this helps you clue you in into your domain. x is an element of all real numbers, but x cannot equal this minus 2, your vertical asymptote value. If you want to present this in the typical style of domain you can do minus infinity going up to this vertical asymptote minus 2 and then minus 2 up to infinity and notice that these values here are not part of your domain because of the circular parentheses it means that the domain excludes this value it does not fall within the domain contrast is very sharply with a presentation that would be like this with square brackets and then in that instance the minus 2 would very well be within the domain but this is not the right answer this right here is the good answer and we'll go to the next question this number two question proves to be a beneficial question if function f of x is equal to the square root of x squared plus 2x plus 1 we have a radical within which we have a polynomial we have to show both the domain and range it seems intimidating at first but it isn't you take that polynomial and you factor it down and you know you're looking at x plus 1 times x plus 1 all within the radical which you know is very similar to x plus 1 whole square and then you employ the properties or the laws of exponents you're looking at x plus 1 whole square all to the power of 1 or 2 these exponents seemingly cancel out you're looking at just x plus 1 but this right here is not the hundred percent of the case because we still have a a square root we have to deal with and we know we cannot have a negative input because you end up with imaginary solutions therefore you end up converting all of that into an absolute value function from there you know very clearly what your domain and range is this is a good instance of a translation x plus h a translation to the left by one unit we're looking here at a vertex at minus one comma zero and your function would be an absolute value looking like this from here now we can easily see the domain the domain is minus infinity to positive infinity and that should be good and then the range is your y values starting here including zero but going up to positive infinity and the question has been done all right let's look at this question number three for what values of x is this function not defined we have a rational function one over tan square x minus one what are the values of x such that you'd put them here, you'd zero out your denominator. These would be the values which would not be part of your domain. You could of course present this or calculate it within a 0, 0,2 pi domain or within minus infinity to infinity domain. We will do with both so we can make this meaningful. Take this denominator and zero it out and calculate for x. Tan square x minus 1 is equal to 0 tan square x is equal to 1 tan x is equal to the square root of 1 but you're always looking at plus and minus roots and you know you have plus and minus 1 x is equal to inverse tan or arc tan of positive and minus 1 you get positive and minus pi over 4 and you know you're looking at all your 45 degree angles 45 135 225 and 315 we can write them out as pi over 4 3 pi over 4 5 pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4 if you are looking here within the domain of 0 including 0 up to 2 pi what values of x is this function not defined this right here would be your answer for that but if you were to demonstrate this in terms of this domain right here minus infinity to infinity then you have to remember that the period of a tan function is always equal to what pi if you're looking at pi over 4 you will f land at 5 pi over 4 because it's 180 degrees away if you're looking at 135 or 3 pi over 4 you land at 315 because it's pi units away for what values of x is this function not defined this within this minus infinity to infinity entire domain your answer could very well be pi over 4 that x cannot equal these values 
pi over 4 plus and minus pi n because you're going to include all these values such as pi over 4, 5 pi over 4 and then going in the opposite direction and you can also say 3 pi over 4 right plus and minus pi n or n pi it doesn't matter then that will include the 135 and then 315 and the values using these integers n plus and minus n so this right here is your completed answer this right here within domain 0 2 pi this right here are your x axis values which are not possible for the domain minus infinity to infinity all right question number four a function has a domain minus pi over two comma pi over two it has a range minus infinity to positive infinity suggest possible function or functions that would fit this description you could have more than one answer and yeah when we're looking at minus pi over two and pi over two we're thinking about trigonometric function and then we're looking at something over here what can this be well we can also draw it out as a good starting point minus pi over 2 pi over 2 notice the circular parentheses indicates that minus 90 and positive 90 are not part of the domain it's going from minus infinity to infinity and then it's going from minus pi over 2 to positive pi over 2 but not including these asymptotic values what can this be how about this y is equal to tan x if supposedly you have this additional information f of 0 is equal to 0 it could very well clue you in meaning the function would go right here to the origin at x-axis value of 0 we have a y-axis value of 0 we would have a good indication here that it must be tan x because it fits the bell but if tan x is the thing you might as well say y is equal to minus tan x too a reflection of this across the x-axis well then you might also say it could be tan of minus x a reflection of the tan x but across the y-axis so all of these are three good possibilities this right here is my graph of tan x. Minus tan x and tan of minus x would very well have this curve here, which is the dashed curve. But you end up having here three options which fit this description over here, and I'm satisfied with all of these three. Our last question here will prove to be an enjoyable one. A function has a horizontal asymptote y equals 1. I've used abbreviations HA horizontal asymptote, VA vertical asymptote. Horizontal asymptote is y equals 1, vertical asymptote is x equals 1 f of 0 is equal to 0 so it tells you the origin is involved that the curve will go to the origin suggest a function there could be more than one answer well let's start by demonstrating our asymptotes we have x equals 1 and then we have y equals 1 what can this function be well when we're looking at this we know in terms of the domain you're going from left to the right you're going from minus infinity up to this asymptote and then for 1 up to this infinity that right there demonstrates your vertical asymptote in terms of range the horizontal asymptote comes into play minus infinity up to this 1 and then from 1 you jump and you proceed on towards infinity the fact that we have x equals 1 as a vertical asymptote tells me we have a rational function and because we have a horizontal asymptote it clues you in that we indeed do have a rational function x equals 1 in terms of a 0 of a denominator could have come from x minus 1 think about it if x minus 1 is your rational function denominator you zero it out you solve for x you get x equals 1 and that tells you you have a vertical asymptote so you know now clearly that x minus 1 represents a good denominator expression for a polynomial and this is going to be a good rational function if the horizontal asymptote was y equals 0 then you know you would be looking at 1 or x minus 1 because if you remember about asymptote de determinations and n and m looking at n and m values n is the highest order of the exponent of the variable in the numerator m is the highest order of the exponent of the variable in the denominator the only way you can have y equals 0 is n right here was less than m but the only way you can have a clear and specific horizontal asymptote which we do y is equal to 1 is a clear and specific asymptote is if n is equal to m you have to calculate them if here m is equal to a 1 x the exponent in terms of the numerator the n value must also equal 1 so both n and m here in terms of their exponent variables are 1 the variables in the denominator and the numerator have the highest order exponent must be a 1 how can you do this determination? It must be an x over here. Think about it. When you do a clear determination for a specific horizontal asymptote, you take the numerator expression and you divide it by the highest order variable exponent and you do likewise in the denominator. When you do all of this, you have 1 over x over x minus 1 over x. Limit as x approaches infinity, this zeroes out. You have 1 over 1 and that's 1. A y equals 1 horizontal asymptote has been determined but it was already provided to us 
So we know this must be the expression by which we are obtaining a y equals 1 horizontal asymptote. Another good factor which clues us into this rational function is this part that the origin is involved. It says f of 0 is equal to 0. If you put 0 in places of x, you'll have 0 divided by 0 minus 1. You are by no means making this function undefined. It's 0 or minus 1, which is 0. Origin is indeed involved. Your function would very well look something like this. Like that. Determining the domain and range helps you out very well because here when you're looking at it in terms of the asymptotes, this fits the bill. When you look at the horizontal and the vertical asymptotes and this right here, it gives you a good idea of this function. There could be other options, but this right here looks like a function which seems right to me. And with that, I thank you for watching this video. Any questions, leave them in the comments. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye.